Hello out there, today we will be doing a toy review of a Japanese figure from the Kamen Rider Gaimu uh, series. Actually we're going to be doing two toy reviews, hopefully, and this these reviews will be done in stop motion and live action. Uh, stop motion will be what you saw a moment ago, and live action when a hand comes out and displays the toys, gimmicks and or accessories or whatever. Um, and yeah, today we'll be doing two things. We'll be doing Kamen Rider Gaim's armor pack and another Kamen Rider figure. And if you don't like Kamen Rider, and if you don't like toy reviews, or the fact that you'll be able to buy these toys in America or England or wherever, I'm sorry. But on the bright side, Somebody in Williamsville, New York, loves you. Yes, you. Um, there's a train track behind my apartment, so occasionally you might hear a train going by, as you just heard. So I'll try speaking louder when that happens. Okay? Alright, let's move on to the first thing. Today, the action figure, the guy. Okay. I am now going to turn this box around slowly so you can take a look at all the images on the box. Let's take a closer look at the images on the box. This is the top, which shows a gimmick of this toy line, the interchangeable armor. I paid 2,180 yen, which is roughly about 22, 23 American dollars given the currency exchange rate. Uh, this is the cheapest I've seen for these figures. The Bandai asking price is 31 3100 yen about most stores are selling these toys for 2500 <laughs> roughly translated the image on the left is discussing the extra armor set um, the image on the right is discussing how the colors of their eyes change with a uh, different armor they did not discuss or mention the 18 points of articulation that the other figures have and that is kind of strange because both this figure and the other figures are almost the same. This image also found on the back of the box shows the next Kamen Rider character to be released. He will be released in December. Um, I'm sorry I do not know his name offhand. I cannot read the kanji and the furigani that's furigana I'm sorry underneath the kanji is difficult for me to see. Let's get him out of the box. As I mentioned, he's more or less like this other characters, with the exception of the loincloth, which does kind of prevent him from bending down completely. But for the most part, he's the same character uh, and articulation and um, design. Here's a turnaround of him. Okay, let's take a look at the armor for Ryogen. So here we have the main part, the headpiece, and the weapon. Okay, let's take a closer look at these. So this is the headpiece. As you can see, there's a tail at the end or on the top. And unlike the other helmets which had of a, a indenture here, it only has a hole. As you can see, this is just this prop doesn't have any movable parts, but it has a fairly decent paint job and sculpt. Let's take a look at the main body. Okay, so Opening the body up to put the to put the helmet in. Open it up like this. Let's take a look inside, shall we? I'll remove the sides so you can take a look. As you see, here we have a peg and a slice for 
the top. Okay. There's a connection part or peg here, but if you miss it, missed it like I did with this side, here we have a double joint here, which kind of helps to put it in a little bit. And a connection bracket here. Here we also have a top that can move both front or back. Alright, now let's take our figure and put it on him. What I have found best when working with these characters is first start on one side and then move on to the next. So here I just clicked it on the back pegs and then I push it on to the front. Okay. Okay. And for the back, which is kind of is something that uh, Baron did not have, where the Baron just kind of hangs loose in the back. This folds up, and the top folds up or down. It doesn't really matter. I think the, the instructions was say this way, but either way, it works, and the gun fits in his hand very well. But as you notice, there isn't any. Uh, trigger holes for his fingers so it has to be the handle only and here we have the character Ryukin I find that removing the shell to, is very easy compared to the Baron shell which I've had trouble with because I, I think it's because the helmet has horns and that kind of prevents the shell from coming off what happens I think is that when you try to remove the helmet the, the this armor from any character because of the horns on the helmet it kind of it comes off it doesn't fully come off the head so as you're trying to pull down it kind of gets stuck on the sides so that's the major problem with this armor but for this guy which we're reviewing today it's pretty clean cut all right now Let's move into the other armor set that came out. On to the next toy. This is the Pine Arms and Ichigo Arms set, or Pineapple and Strawberry Armor set. Let's turn this box around so you can take a look at the art. An interesting note is when the Kamen Rider Gaimu Henshin Belt was released, the pine lock seed was an option that came with a three lock seed piece or holder. You were able to buy this lock seed set with the belt or separately. Also, during the TV show up to this point, a lot of the times Gaimu had used this armor, the pineapple armor, instead of his orange armor. The Ichigo arms was released on the same day that, or within the same weekend of his appearance or this appearance in the TV show. Let's take a closer look at the box. On the top of the box we have a brief summary of what these things do. From the top put them down onto the figure to create a new armored figure. This armor set cost about 1320 yen or about 13 or f maybe 14 or 15 American dollars. This is the cheapest I've seen. Um, Bandai's asking price is, I believe, 18, uh, and many stores are selling it for 15 or 1,500 yen, about. Um, as you can see, the helmet of the pine arms is visible, whereas the helmet for the strawberry arms is not. On the back of the box, we see how the gimmick is that these armors are interchangeable with the other toys in the series. One interesting thing is a piece of yellow cardboard on the back 
of the toy holder or inside the box denotes that these armors are gaims with these two emblems as if maybe later on in the series they'll create more f armor series that are not for gaim but other characters okay let's take a look at the armors first let's take a look at pineapple or pine okay This is the helmet. As you notice, this has this typical two dash holes. And this is the mace. The thin but fairly sturdy line connecting it. And it is fairly long. As you see, the handle does have a hole for the sword. Um, I take, I'm, take his sword. This sword does connect to the mace in a very similar way as the orange slice sword. Um, Gaim's so far is the only guy that has that weapon that can do that, that can combine so far. Okay. Now opening up the shell, taking a look, here we have a peg here and a peg here. So when you put these up, it's important to have both sides, the front and back, in the proper position or it won't work. Okay. Now let's put the helmet on. Okay. And for this, I actually kind of want to use Baron. Um, cuz I think it's more amusing. Um, he looks really amusing with it. Now, in the show, one of the things that they show, one of the uh, effects they have to show the character being changed is they have a shot inside the uh armor before it unfolds. To, re to recreate that, all you have to do is just take this panel down and so as such. Now, this folds down very simply, very easily. I kind of like it on Baron because it makes him look like he has a strange hairstyle with this on the top. He's kind of like, doesn't know how exactly how to use a comb or maybe it's his new do for the day. Anyways, this is the pineapple armor. And other than the gimmick of connecting to the sword, the mace is, that's about it for the mace. And it's this armor. Let's take a look at the strawberry armor. Okay. First, let's take a look at the three knives. Each knife has a strawberry scalp. In the pack, there's two with a hole in them. And the third comes with two pegs. And this is the handle, which is big enough for the character's hands. Let's take Ryokin demonstrate. As you see, it's more than enough space for him, for a toy to hold it, a knife. To connect, it's very easy. You put it like this. It's a fairly firm fit to remove very simply like this. Okay, put the weapon over here for a moment. Now the strawberry is a little bit different than the other helmets. One of the main differences is uh, it, out. it doesn't have a flat surface where you can like where the other armors have a hole on the bottom where you can just put it on like this. Um, if you want to display it, you could just, as you see, just take the top and remove it like that. 
of displays like that. Um, the armor is kind of different in respects that not everything folds down. As you see, this folds up. This side folds down, and the front, the front, as you see, has a top on it, and that folds down. And this side does not fold down. It folds back. One more time. This side folds back. Okay. So let's put the helmet on and give Ryokin strawberries or Ichigo. Okay. There's no exact order for this changing. Um, only thing is, actually, there is. Move. The, have this front before this side. Because the top makes is, you know, it's kind of difficult to have this on and slide it in. So it's better just to have this and huh. oh, the helmet came loose. Sometimes when you transform these things, the helmet does come loose. That's always important if you want to do the henshin gimmick to. Make sure the helmet is on correctly. Um, so far, out of all the armors, the banana armor is the most difficult because it just, it, at first, it, it clips into, it went, the sides just don't want to fold down very easily. And um, pulling off is difficult. These, the pineapple or pine or in strawberry or Ichigo, are very easy to pull off. Note that the top, or the front, I mean, is fairly well indentured to put in this hair. Okay. And, yeah, that's basically the armor. I kind of like it on him because the green kind of matches. Um, and that's the armor abilities and how they look on different characters. Um, if you go to the Gaimu website for Bandai, they have a little flash game where you can interchange the armors with the action figures and it's kind of neat anyways uh thank you for watching and have a good day